Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Downshift. Today we're going to be talking about the newly released Corvette C8 lap times that were leaked around the world famous Nürburgring Nordschleife track in Germany. This is a pretty big deal because the official lap times for the Corvette's two latest vehicles, the C7 Z06 and ZR1, never officially came out, leaving many to speculate. Of course, there could have been many plausible reasons as to why Chevy never released these numbers, including bad weather, vehicle problems and so on and so forth. So the reported number for this generation's base model Corvette is 7 minutes and 28.3 seconds. This was achieved using the Z51 package which of course includes loads of sporty features which help the car move more quickly. Now for those that are skeptical of the number, I assure you that it's coming from a pretty reliable source in musclecarsandtrucks.com. I'll leave a link in the description to this article as well if you do want to check it out after the video. This is the same website that has had a string of exclusive C8 reports, some of which include breaking the two hybrid C8 model story, as well as disproving Motor Trend's dyno test numbers. So the site definitely has built up some solid credibility, and I don't see why they can't be trusted. Shifting gears back to the number, I do want to say that I'm somewhat disappointed with the result. Yes, I wasn't expecting anything crazy because after all, this is a base model Stingray and the numbers from here on out will only get better, but still, compared to other Corvettes, this doesn't scream upgrade. The C7 equipped with the Z51 package managed to get a time of 7 minutes and 39 seconds, but this was reportedly in unfavorable weather conditions with a factory driver back in 2013. That's over 6 years ago. The difference here is about 11 seconds, but that gap would be smaller if the C7 was tested in optimal weather conditions. Even then, 11 seconds sounds like a big difference, but on a track that extends for 12.9 miles, this is hardly a generational leap forward. When the C8 was revealed, I really thought that Chevy decided to put the engine in the back because their hands were tied and they were handicapped to a certain extent. They said that they were almost at the brink of what was possible for a front engine vehicle and to take the next step forward they needed to drastically change the architecture of the vehicle and that is exactly what they did. I presume that the shifting of the engine from the front to the rear would make a huge difference instantly but I think I may have sold myself on that idea a little bit too aggressively and that may simply just be my fault. Let's take a look at a few other Corvettes from the past that have also taken on this track and see where they rank against the newly produced C8. An official test from Corvette yielded a time of 7 minutes and 19 seconds in the C6 ZR1, while a German auto magazine managed to shave off an additional 3 seconds. On a side note here, might be time for Chevrolet to get some new drivers in these things to get the best possible times. The Camaro ZL1 clocked a 7.16, with a factory driver as well which is also super impressive from Chevy. The site then ranks the Corvette C8's track time and places it right between two very familiar foes, the Porsche and the BMW. The 2007 Porsche 911 GT2 is now 12 years old, but it's still a beast and is only beaten by the Corvette C8 by about 4 seconds, while the BMW M4 GTS beats the C8 by only about half a second. This is a good place for the C8 to be ranked because it's probably at least half the price of each of these cars MSRP when they first launched. I'm also quite interested in seeing if Chevrolet decides to go for another attempt. It would be quite beneficial for the manufacturer to get a better time for marketing purposes, and I also think that the car can do better based on its design and power output. If Chevy doesn't attempt it again, I'm sure an automotive magazine or website will get their hands on one of these vehicles at some point in time and do their own testing which would also be pretty great. Hopefully we hear more about this story in the coming weeks because in my opinion, a track time is by far one of the most impressive figures a vehicle can show off. Sure, horsepower and torque figures are cool, 0-60 to launch times are also cool, and a quarter mile is most definitely cool as well, but nothing screams all around beast like a solid track time. It requires a good balance of power 
downforce, weight, agility, stopping distance, and so much more, which is, in my opinion, the best indicator of a vehicle's true performance. That is going to do it for today's video, ladies and gents. Let us know in the comments down below what you think of this track time of 7 minutes and 28 seconds. Do you think it's good, or can the vehicle do better, and should it be tested one more time? Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you're new around here, definitely drop a like as it supports the channel, and subscribe for more daily Corvette content. Have yourselves a great day, and we'll see you all in the next one. Peace.